It's Saturday, May 2, 2020, about uh, 8.15 in the morning or so. A little windy, so you're probably going to pick up a little wind noise in the microphone and the camera. We've had a very late spring this year. Again, I live in Michigan. And... Uh, this is part of my hay field. You can see a tree there in the distance. I lost a limb last summer in a storm. You can see one of my birdhouses there. I trim that limb off. You hear all, probably hear all the birds in the background. I was saying we've had a very late spring. It's been in the 50s and 60s. That's Fahrenheit. Today it's supposed to be in the mid-60s, which is about as warm as we've been so far this year. This will be all tall, waist-high grass you see here within well, probably four or five weeks. And then we'll mow it and bale it. Another view of the hay field, same day, two minutes later. See the neighbor's horses off in the distance. Also got a goat, you might hear that once in a while. See the brush pile right there, my neighbor and I, that's the person across the street. There's two trees there and uh, we started taking them out because they're dying with our chainsaws. That's a lot of work by the way. And eventually we'll burn that brush pile you see there on the right. We'll probably break it into smaller piles and then burn it. Get a nice quiet couple days. See the daffodils there. They're beyond their peak now and they're starting to fade. A couple of fire bushes. They're just starting to pop out. There is uh, various annuals that are coming up now. There's some irises, some bearded irises, a couple of butterfly bushes, some daylilies. They're all just starting to emerge. Again, we're running a little behind right now in one of the birdhouses I watch from my shop window. We're running behind right now. Uh, not, not been terribly wet, but it has been cold and windy. And that's my driveway that goes out mailbox in the distance. And again I'm sure you can hear the birds, red winged blackbirds, nettle larks. Power lines you see in the distance come from a nuclear power plant which is about uh, 25 miles or so to the south of west. That would be to the left in this photo. We're looking north west, northwest right now. There are actually two nuclear power plants in our area. Well, welcome back, folks. As I've been working through the process of preparing the little Yamaha Wild One for first startup, I've been working through my checklist of things that I need to take care of and one of the things that occurred to me is trying to set the idle RPM. Now the Yamaha Y01 does not have a tachometer built in and I don't have one of those digital units, at least not yet, I might get one one of these days. But So in order to set the RPM I have to either do it by ear, by guess and by gosh, or I can try using uh, this little device you see in front of you. This is by a German company called Trace It. I think that's how that's pronounced. I'm not an expert in the German language. It's really a serometer and it measures frequency. And this uh, device, which I purchased uh, some time ago, and I used it originally, or still do actually, for sitting, uh, setting the RPM on small engines like lawnmowers, chainsaws, those kind of uh, devices. The way it works is the top scale here measures RPM and the bottom scale measures Hertz. And the concept behind it is you push this up against 
the engine that's running and then you turn this dial like you see me doing here and this wire extends out and then you can see the changes on the dial right there and when you reach the point of this matching on the uh, as you turn it out it matches the rpm of the or the frequency of the engine rather this wire will vibrate at a very high speed like you see me emulating there and when it reaches its maximum stroke not uh, doing a, a justice when it reaches its maximum stroke in terms of this motion you read the dial on the the top dial which is RPM you see right there it's at around 2500 I think you can see it right there that um, coincides with the frequency of the engine uh, translates to RPM and that will tell you the RPMs of that engine at that point or that motor it can be used on electric motors too uh, I've had mixed results using this on motorcycle engines because there's multiple shafts spinning besides the crankshaft you have the transmission uh, shaft spinning as well and this uh, by uh, its own acknowledgement if you read the instructions does not work well on multi-shaft devices like for, well for instance I use it on my try to use it on my lathe which has multiple shafts and gears built into it and it, it doesn't work at all on my lathe I've tried it a number of different times but on an electric motor like a bench grinder, it'll work fine. And again, these have been, I believe, around for some time. And they do work. They actually, believe it or not, are um, simplicity in themselves when you think about it. And uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to go over to my Black & Decker bench grinder that I reconditioned last summer and we'll demonstrate how this works. So let's go set up at the grinder and we'll give it a test. should be able to see there that that uh, motor on the grinder is spinning according to this little gizmo at about uh, 3600 RPMs maybe just a touch under which matches the manufacturer's label so that's it a serometer measuring RPM we'll give this a try on the Yamaha Wild one again no promises it's going to work there but I'll at least give it a try. That's it for this video today, folks. Any thoughts, issues, questions, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.